but oh, well, we're going to go ahead and start while I'm talking. All right. Okay. This would be Tuesday, October 20th, dealing with sassy children. Um, <laughs> Heroes got second in the Charger Challenge. We're going to go for our, uh, picking up notebooks. If you have not made your notebook look all pretty, then make sure it looks all pretty so you can turn it in. I was actually wrong. It's not worth 115. I was 10 points off. It's actually worth 125. Um, not because it's going to make a big difference those 10 points, but it is worth 125. Make sure your full name's on the cover, stuff like that. You're going to need to download a new story for uh, The Lady and the Tiger, our first short story that we're going to get into. Which of our short stories that we're going to do, this is one of the shortest, which apparently scares children because it has actual words in it. Uh, it is shorter than a novel, which qualifies as a short story, but apparently it's not short enough. Ironically, was not short enough for a rather short person. Just pointing out random bits of information. Then, um, for here, without having you look at yours, you can either turn it off or put it down or whatever works best for you. In theory, it should be in your brain, so we're going to try and get you caught up. This movie, I, there's nothing you might put horrible children. Uh, we'll start off with plot. Malia! Um, what is the plot in the story? The main, like, conflict of the story. Not bad. But not always conflict, but I can see that, but we're going to go oh. slightly... Yes, Malia! The storyline. Sto not bad. I can do storyline. I like that one. Nicole, you, you can perfect yours. What's happening in the story? Usually it works even better, just the what happens. I like the, the simplicity. <laughs> you know, kids, simple works out. Just what happens if we go through it. The plot, you just tell me what's happening so I have an idea. Characters! For that one, Wash, what am I looking for? Characters? Go you. Who in the story, um, and then as we get into it, we'll sometimes argue about what qualifies as an actual who in the story. For the setting, Johnny, who has not, not have his iPad on, because I have to break his fingers and feed them to him, because that would be absolutely ridiculous. Johnny, the setting, there are two parts to the setting, and that would be? Um, where the Nicely done. Time, time, time. <laughs> Sassy. Uh, time and place, or the when and the where, either one of those works for me. And we got the point of view of you guys yesterday, correct? Yes. Yay. Uh, J Blanc, what is the point of view? Um, I was going to say who's talking, but it's not because it's like how you see the story. Nicely done. How we see the story, um, what character it is following, and stuff along those lines. Deep you. Uh, we have three different types of uh, point of view that we're going to use. What are our three different types? Um, first person, or... Yes. Third person, omniscient, third person, limited, and then first person. Nice. Done. Uh, two different third persons and a first person. There is another point of view, uh, but we won't use it, and that is Zoe. Second person. Second person. And second person, we'll get to it. Second person is when you say you, like directions, you don't like this, you will pay attention. Uh, you have failed. You are sassy. Uh, that is second person. You're talking directly to someone. Not anyone in here. That'd be ridiculous. Yes, I was. Um, for the first person, one, we take a look at that hammer. How is the first person story told? Um, told from a character in the story. Nice enough. From the main character talking to us, the I, me, we. I think the novel we're doing is in first person. Isn't that from him? Yeah. Is that first person? I think so, too. As it goes through and talks to us, it's in first person. And then both third person limited and third person omniscient craft are told using, instead of the main character talking to us, it uses a narrator. narrator. Nicely done. Third person limited, Kelly, follows how many characters? One. One. And Mo, third person omniscient, follows? Many people. Works for me, more than one. And so narrator tells the story, follows one. Third person omniscient uh, tells the story and follows many. And I got to examples with you guys yesterday, didn't I? Yeah, we all think so. class I got to. Except for Mo, he was asleep. It's okay. It's a long day. Uh, we got to, and then oh, yeah, we did the says, <laughs> Zach repeated the phrase to himself again as he glanced at the numbers, scrawled along the piece of paper, clutched his hand. As long as he kept his cool and didn't look suspicious, he'd be fine. It'd be easy. He'd been easy the first several times. Using that information, Burkholder, what's our point of view? Third person limited. Now, you can turn on your iPad if you want to look. That will help you out, which is fine. I'm not saying you're wrong, but I'm just saying if you want to look, I'm okay with it now. What did you say it was? Third person limited. It is correct. Following one character through the entire thing, third person limited. See, now I introduced that so it pops up and tells you because useful. On the night of the day on which this cruel deed was done, I was aroused from sleep by the cry of fire. The curtains of my bed were on flames while the house was blazing. 
It was a great difficulty that my wife, my servant, myself. By the way, this is going to come from uh, an Edgar Allan Poe story that we're going to end up reading. Because she puts Annabelle Lee to shame. Miller! Um, third person omniscient. Third. Uh, no, 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 first person. Well, those are two options, or you were just trying to trick me. So which one are you going to go with? First person. Why do you say first person, not third person omniscient? Because it says I. Oh, nice one. Well you are correct. This one is definitely first person. And then our poem, Maggie and Millie and Molly and May, uh, went down to the beach to play one day, and Maggie discovered a shell that sang, and Millie befriended a friend star, and Molly was chased by a horrible thing, and Cat told me what it was our. Um, third person omniscient. And how do you know? Because it's talking about what all people. Nice done. Different people doing different things. Third person on mission. Ooh, let's throw another one at you. As I walked up the hill, I realized that the atmosphere was just too quiet. There was no sound from the bunny monster, who was nearly always growling from the base of the maple tree. I thought I saw a shadow move high up on the slope. But when I looked again, it was gone. Still, I shuddered as I felt a silent threat pass over me like a cloud over the sun. Combs? Uh, first person? Why? Because it has an I. Is correct. First person says I. As the student walked up the hill, she realized that the atmosphere was just too quiet. The bunny monster tipped his head back and drew back, drew breath to growl. But just as the first grrrr passed his lips, he heard the crack of a dead branch off to his left. Startled, he looked over, cocking his horned head to one side, and watched the strange man with great interest. As the creepy man saw the student start up the hill, he moved quickly into the shelter of the usual maple tree. If she saw him now, everything would be ruined. She thought she saw a shadow move high up on the slope, but when she looked again, it was gone. Jack. Third person omniscient. Why do you say third person omniscient? Because it follows the characters, the student, and the creepy man. Nicely done. Sort of the same scene as this one, just told using a different point of view, where it jumps around and follows it from there. Third person omniscient is correct. Bunny monster, by the way, small rabbit, large horns on the head. I've got pictures of them over there on my wall. They used to show up more in class. Uh, bunny monsters were just these things that existed there. Bunny monster crossing is up there in the little yellow sign. It's the thing from the Lunchable commercial. Also from the Lunchable commercial. Next up. As she walked up the hill, she realized that the atmosphere was just too quiet. There was no sound from the bunny monster, who she so often heard growling from the base of the maple tree. She thought she saw a shadow move high up on the slope, but when she looked again, it was gone. Nevertheless, she shuddered as she felt a silent threat pass over her. It felt like a cloud creeping over the sun. Cole! Third person limited. How do you know? Because it's following the sun. Nice look. Third person limited. Let's throw one more at you. As she walked up the hill, she realized that the atmosphere was just too quiet. There was no sound from the bunny monster, which she so often heard growling from the top of the maple tree. She thought she saw a shadow move high up on the slope. When she looked again, it was gone. The man saw her start up the hill, and he moved quickly behind the shelter of the huge old maple tree. If she saw him now, everything would be ruined. Uh, fact check. Um, third person on mission. Why do you say that? Because it's talked about the man and the girl. Nice one. And I lied. I have one more. I thought that was the last one, but it's actually this one. As you walk up the hill, you realize that the atmosphere is just too quiet. There's no sound from the bunny monster. You know it's almost always growling from the base of the maple tree. You think you see a shadow that would pipe on the slope. When you look again, it's gone. Hargens! First person limited. First per that would be completely made up. It's not a sure. <laughs> But that was a bold move. I like it. Way to combine them all together. Try again. Third person limited. Third person limited is also incorrect, but closer on that one. It is not actually using a narrator. That's what nicely done. If it helps, this is the one we will never use. This is the only time we'll use it all year. Second person. Is correct, go you. Second person, because it uses you. I just wanted to throw one at you to make sure you were on top of your game. Let's keep going. More learning. <laughs> your voice cracks. Theme. <laughs> Uh, this one is one of the toughest ones we're going to do. Uh, not the definition of it, but to figure it out as we go through and do stuff. Aaliyah? The moral of the story? Ooh, I like the moral of the story. Not bad. I can take that one. I go for uh, the main idea or what we learn. But moral could definitely work, as I put what the story teaches us. And so it is not the plot. It is the fact the book we're doing over there. The plot is kid goes to jail after being a horrible person and then tries to break out. That's the plot. The theme is uh, Kill your best friend. Yeah, poor choices ruin your life. A theme should be able to apply to multiple stories where you can take just that one sentence thing and apply it to several. 
You can't say, you know, kid goes to jail in a horrible underground dungeon and then tries to break free. That applies to so many stories. It does not. That applies to just one. The theme, you should be able to apply to multiple stories like hatred or love or support your friends or bullying or something like that. Then we have two conflicts, um, internal conflict, and then we're going to have the opposite, which is the other one. Do you know what internal conflict is? Yeah. Can I? I think. Okay, let's find out. Um, we did this last year. No, I've heard of that. Um, an internal conflict is when, like, the conflict is, like... Wait, first off, what's a conflict? The problem in the story. Okay. Um, what's internal in mean? Inside. Okay, go ahead. So it's, like, inside the person's head, more like it's... Like the person's arguing with their self rather than like the world. So it's like if you have to do this or you have to do that, you have to decide which button to make. Boom. So internal is always a decision. <laughs> Anytime you do internal, internal conflict, it is a decision the character has to make in the story. Should I do the charger challenge or should I wait till the next time? That's an internal conflict. Should I rage that we lost and beat up every globetrotter I find? Yes. Or should I accept <laughs> it and move on and try to beat them like a real person? No. no. Jay Blanc? I didn't know the next one. <laughs> I'm so smart. If internal conflict is the uh, sixth one, what's number seven, Jay Blanc? External conflict. And what does external mean? Um, when two different characters fight. It is correct. It's a throwdown. Fight. <laughs> a battle between two physical things. We are always going to be writing it out as blank versus blank. Um, I know in comp they do the generic version. I don't do the generic version. The generic version is man versus man, man versus nature. Um, those exist, but they're really generic. I actually want you to fill in who the man is. Bob versus Joe. Uh, Daniel versus the angry donkey. Something like that. So you're going to have to fill in the two different sides. What is this battle? And it can be Bobby versus his own brain or something like that. Catton? Also sometimes when I like, read books, Sometimes the external conflict doesn't always fit, like, man versus nature or Correct. man versus... Correct. I agree the same thing. They try to shoehorn into those, like, five different ones, and I don't like those five. I got rid of them. They're horrible. Truth, I mean, what you said is true. All right. Now, keeping those notes up, we are going to see how smart you are. And we are going to apply these seven elements to something we have read and see if you can figure out the seven elements of a story. Height. Height. Here's how it goes through and does. We're going to take a look at Annabelle Lee. And we're going to apply the seven elements of a short story to Annabelle Lee. You don't have to write these down. If you want to, you can to help you out, but you definitely don't have to. Uh, so we're going to go through and go from there. Uh, first off, with the plot, I always like to throw in the plot first. It makes me happy. We're always going to do five parts of the plot. We're going to break down every story into the five main things. So as far as Annabelle Lee goes, what is uh, plot point number one that we should have? Jay Blanc? Dude loves Annabelle Lee. Works for me. I have boy and girl love so much that the angels notice. After that, um, what's our next important thing we're going to have in the story? Uh, Gates. After they fall in love and the angels notice? The girl dies. <laughs> mm -hmm. I know that. Girl dies from cold wind and is buried. Nicely done. Then the third, remember we only have, we have to do the whole story in five, so that's why you have to sort of ration them out. After the girl dies, our next thing, Trayson? Guy goes on the streets and starts yelling at the angels are coming. Boy goes insane. <laughs> you, guys are on, you guys are on point so far. And then after boy, and here's where it gets a little tough, we have to sum up the whole end of the story with only two different things. We only go up to the four and the five. So then number four, what do we have for that one, Mo? Oh, that was really bad. I know. You. I still have faith in you. No, I'm not. Um, a different mode. That's mode. That's mode. Yeah. What? Two different modes. Boy tries to get back at the angels. By doing what? By eating his corpse. Can't go in there because that'd be number five. You can't jump all the way to the end. Because that's obvi obviously us back up. We know what number five is going to be. What's number five going to be? Boy sleeps. Dude, nice Dude goes into a crypt and sleeps. So we're going to have to have something. If that's number five, we're going to be able to figure out what comes between boy goes insane and then goes to here. So what we put in between those? Johnny? Um, boy has an evil plan to get even with the angels. Ooh, not bad. Uh, can they get? Is it like 
boy thinks that the devils and the angels are working together. I can see that too. Mm. Huh? Ah, creepy. You had the same thinking as Edgar Allan Poe. Boy blames angels and demons for death. And then now, Muhammad, we're back to you. Which is number five is? Sleeps in the tomb with Edgar There you go. Boy is crazy enough to sleep in the tomb. So that covers our entire story, covers all the main important things in five things. No matter how long the story is, because apparently some of them are frighteningly long because they're almost a full page, we're going to be able to break it down into the five most important things that happen. Characters. I say we have three characters in this one. Zaniah, give me my first character. Annabelle Lee. Yeah, usually the first people go for is Annabelle Lee. Riley, who would be our second character? Dude. Works for me, dude. And I could agree to a third character, although it kind of depends on how you interpret it. It could go through different ways, but whatever. Carmona, who can we say is the third one? Angels. And I would say the angels on there. Anytime we do characters, we also have to describe the characters. We're going to come up with a little description for each one, too. Yes? But there's also other ones, like the demons, and there's the kinsmen. The problem, that's where we get into, is oftentimes what I'll do is we're going to... Because our stories will have a lot of characters, I'm always going to pick a smaller number, and then you have to argue which you think the three most important characters are. Or if there's more, I'll say who are the five most important characters. Because you're right, we can always keep going and going, but I like to make it so you have to rank and argue, because ranking and arguing makes you think, and apparently that's like important in school or something, whatever. And so I would say those are the three most important, unless you want to put an argument to say that someone's more important, but then you'd be wrong. Back to here. Uh, it's for the argument for, oh, the description. How would you describe Annabelle? Now, your description has to be something that would not apply to any other character. So you can't say, a person. <laughs> not going to work. So you're going to have to find something that is a good enough description that separates her from anyone else. Like if I was giving you a matching test and you had three descriptions, these would be a good enough matching thing to help you match it up on a test. Hopefully that helps you figure it out. Page. It is a girl. And what does she do? She dies. I put girl who makes poor choices. I think that's uh, pretty close. Die would be a pretty poor choice, typically. <laughs> that's right up there. And for dude. Do you? Absolutely insane. Goes insane with love. Right. It's kind of scary how much you guys are starting to think like me. We should we be worried? Yes, you should probably be worried. <laughs> uh, for the angels, we can go to that one. Miller. Of their love. Oh, I put evil girl killers. All right, all right. I can see both of those. For the setting, jumping back to the, the setting from there. Uh, Aaliyah. First, we have two parts to a setting. One of the two parts. The where and the when. Go you. When, when, the where. For the when, there's not a whole lot of clues in there, but we should be able to tell. Uh, sort of win throughout all time, because that was a big thing we talked about. And also, you should be able to tell what time of year like those two things should be in there. Not so great. Any no, more? I just don't know if this is, like, specific enough. What are you, what are you thinking? Many, many a year ago. That's what I was thinking. And when, when would that be? Years ago. Was that recently or a long time ago? A long time ago, because Edgar Allan Poe is, like, long dead. Nice to know, yeah. right there. And then, Tracen, what time of year? Uh... Winter. Why do you say that? Because the wind came out and it was cold and it hit here. Hard. Nicely done. For the where, this one hopefully not frightening. Uh, McKay, where does Annabelle Lee take place? In the kingdom by the sea. Nailed kingdom. It. kingdom by the sea. <laughs> ah, go you. you can also argue that it takes place inside the mausoleum thing um, if you wanted to, but I'd be like, well, where is that mausoleum? In the kingdom. By the sea. And so it depends. And you could go from there and I could argue those also. Point of view. Ooh. And I don't know if that requires you to go back and look at it, but hopefully not. If you remember all the discussions we had, it should kind of come straight forward and help you out on that one. The point of view on that one, Ole. First person. Why do you say first person? Because it's talking from his point of view. Actually, no. The whole thing is dude talking straight to us. It was just follows dude and he keeps saying stuff to us. For the theme. This one's a little tougher. My, say, my best guess for the theme is all of the characters sort of act out of the same emotion, or the same emotion connects to all of them, was my thinking on this one. Zoe? Love or death. How so? Because the girl and the guy love each other, but the, like, the girl dies because they love each other too much. 
I can see that. Love, love and death, always good things to go together. Johnny? Um, I put uh, love is stronger than death. How so? Because um, even though he went insane and even though she died, um, he still loved her. I put love. I said all dude talks about his love and how that drove him to do what he did. So I think you guys are pretty good. Dude. Go you. Internal conflict. Once again, Kenna, what is an internal conflict? Um, when the person has a conflict with themselves. And the problem with internal conflict is it doesn't always come right out and tell you in the story. You're not always going to have something where the character's like, should I run down the street or should I hide in my house? I don't know. You're like, oh, that's an easy one. Sometimes it's a matter of seeing what happens in the story and you realize there is an implied internal conflict. The character had to make a decision at some point in that story. Like with Dude, he has to make a decision in the story. Even though he doesn't come out and say it, what choice does he have to make? Now, much like before, when we did idioms, we cannot globetrot of this. Anytime you give me an internal conflict, you have to give me two choices without using the word not. You can't say smack the baby or not smack the baby because that's pretty much the same thing you're being lazy. You have to say smack the baby or pet the baby. Those are two different options. Or run from the tiger or hide in a building. So give me two different options that you think he chose. Don't use not because then I'll make fun of you. Muhammad. Move on with his life after an animal dies. Or uh, keep like thinking about her and not, or keep thinking about her and like, like. So move on or become obsessed. Yeah. Oh, I, 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 I can see that. Patton. Um. Be insane or be sad. Yeah, I can see that. I was like, those are the same thing. Like, no, no, being he did not deal with his grief. Right? I can see that. Be insane or be sad. Jay Blanc. Give her a jacket or let her be cold. Nice to know. Going back to how I told her, I could definitely say that. But his love kept her warm. Not very well. Both. Save people. Sleep with dead lady or don't. You just use don't. Don't is short. Nicely done. Much better. I did sleep in two or just move on. Wow. It's kind of creepy how close you guys are. Angels have a decision to make in the story. Technically implied. Aaliyah? Um wreak havoc on dude and Annabelle's lives or forget about them. That would work. I could definitely see it. Uh, Mo? Uh, kill Annabelle Lee or don't kill her. Or <laughs> <laughs> kill Annabelle Lee or Ooh, I could accept our super love. Pretty darn close. close. Yeah. I know. External conflict. Hopefully this one's a pretty straightforward external conflict where it just kind of comes right out and says it to you. Zoe? Well, extra conflict is always something versus something. The wind versus the girl, And how is that important in the story? Because they kill the bully. And who sends the wind? Angels. So I would probably say instead... Angels versus Dude. And I can see that being a big one. Um, I put angels versus Dude, but I can see angels versus Annabelle Lee being the same idea. Where you have the, the story, you have the angels versus them. Mo? Wouldn't it be angels and demons versus dude? Because they're working together. Yeah. Yeah, once he fully admits the crazy, I could dig that. Um, oh, there's angels versus animal. I know. You were just looking in the angels future. That I think I put. Oh, I even put dude versus his own sanity on there because as it starts going into it, we start realizing just how crazy he is. Um, it's more of him versus his own brain. Mohammed? <laughs> but internal is a decision he has to make. I know, that's where it gets kind of tricky on that one. Whereas you can have something in your, with this you versus your own craziness, even though it's inside. Like, you could have John, John versus his cancer. But the cancer's inside him. I know, but that's still like a conflict because you're trying to fight the cancer, so I know. Words. Fact check. You do realize your clock's not on, right? You realize it's not a clock, right? Or your timer. You realize it's not a timer, right? Do you know what that is? Okay, countdown. Not a countdown. Two numbers. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, advanced kids. It's Ten and Go twenty. <laughs> yesterday, that's not what it had. It it's had different numbers up there yesterday. It's the oh, date. It's the date. Oh my God. Oh. 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 It's advanced kids. Watching you guys learn. I felt tingly. <laughs> 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 